Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today is building day. I'm going to be building the kit of the week and this week's kit of the week is the North American F51D Mustang in 148 scale from Airfix. Now, if you've got one of these and want to know how to put it together, this is the video for you. If you're thinking about buying one and just want to know what comes with it, then there's already a companion box opening video available online. Of course, if you want, you could wait till tomorrow as well when the combo special is available. That's box opening, the build, and kicks off with some extra bonus historical material. Now, if you like the video, and I hope you do, then please do remember to say so by clicking the like button down there. You can also, if you haven't done so already, remember to subscribe to the channel for this and other videos. All you have to do for that is to click on the logo down there in the bottom right corner. It doesn't cost you anything, helps me enormously. And of course, if you want to give some more concrete support, you can do that through the super thanks button down there. Or you can do that through Patreon and buy me a coffee. Links to both of those are in the information box below. You'll also find a link to the Airfix store. If you click through there and buy anything at all, be it this Mustang or any other kits or paints or whatever, then Airfix, at no extra cost to you, will donate some money to this channel as well. And of course, if you're an Airfix club member, you'll get your 10% online discount. Enough of all of that. Let's get on and see how I built my North American F51D Mustang from Airfix. So as usual, first of all, I'm spraying some parts, mainly interiors, and with those, I'll start with US Interior Green. Starting construction and the seat is made by adding the seat pan to the back like this. Then the side support goes on. This has the lap strap molded in as well. The seat can then be positioned on the armor plate back and left to set. The floor of the cockpit is supposed to be natural wood. I've used mahogany here for a touch of luxury. The radio equipment box is painted black. The seat has a leather stitched backing here. The straps are khaki. And this headrest is black. There are two parts of radio boxes to put together. Here you can see this piece is undershot, not sufficiently filled with plastic during the moulding process. Now I do need to fill this in. I use perfect plastic putty for the job. It's very fine grain and you can smooth the edges with water before it sets. Back to the seat and I'm going to add some black detail wash to bring out the stitching and the edges of the straps. Then I can add a bit of steel to the buckles on the belt. At the back of the radio compartment is this plate which needs to set in first. Once the fillow on the radio box is dry, I can sand it smooth with my mini sanding stick, a flat toothpick with a strip of sandpaper attached. When it's done, this can go onto the main radio box. It slots into that plate we just fitted and into two slots towards the front. When it's all dry, of course, I'll paint it black. The seat structure can now go onto the cockpit area. followed by the joystick. Now on that radio compartment, I'm gonna do a little bit of dry brushing with aluminium paint to make it look scuffed and used, and this helps bring out some of the detail. Talking of detail, onto the instrument panel, which I've decided to paint. First, of course, black all over. Then I'm gonna dry brush with white to bring out all the instrument bezels and the edges of the panels. Then with tiny bits of white, add suggestions of instrument dials. You can use the decal as a reference if you wish. Add little bits of color as you think appropriate. There's a red notice panel at the top and one of the instruments has quite a lot of yellow in it. 
When it's all done, the last thing to do is to add a drop of gloss varnish on each instrument dial to look like glass. And I must say, I'm really, really happy with the result. So, our finished instrument panel goes onto the rudder bar box. Then the whole thing goes into the front of the cockpit tub. Now while that's all settling down, I'll start building the radiator scoop. First I'll paint the insides of them in aluminium. The radiator faces are painted in burnt iron. Now these faces go into one half of the scoop, then the other half joins onto it. There is this carburetor air intake here that has a grill to fit on the front, and this slots onto the top of the scoop. Then the whole assembly sits on the underside of the cockpit piece. Now take note of how it all lines up. Next I'll paint the tail gear leg in interior green and a bit of aluminium before adding a quick wash to the interior of the wheel well. These two pieces become the tail wheel well walls, not something you want to say after a heavy day. One side goes on first, Then the tail wheel goes into place, into a slot at the top of the bay, and a hole on either side of the well opening near the door. Put the other wall on, and the structure is actually really secure. Next onto the cockpit walls, and I'll detail wash them now to see what I've got. Once it's dry, I'll do a bit of more dry brushing, this time with a bit of my interior green let down with a touch of white. Just remember, whenever you make shadows, you must always make highlights to give them contrast. With that done, I can add the interior decals. Then there are a few interior bits to add, like this pipe on the starboard wall. Then the throttle quadrant and trim wheel on the port wall. There's this small piece that goes into each side of the nose. I'll drop it into place and secure with a spot of ultra thin cement. I like to make the fin or vertical stabilizer now rather than glue it to each half of the fuselage and then glue the whole lot together. After I've done that, the cockpit wall goes into the port side of the fuselage, followed by the fin. Then the cockpit assembly can go into place. And I must say, this all went really well. Then the starboard side of the fuselage joins on, and it's held in place with tape and clamps to set. The engine cover can go on too. While that's setting onto the main gear bay and the rear wall piece just needs to be connected. Then on the lower skin there are holes to be drilled for the stores. I'm using fuel tanks and rockets so I need eight holes on each side. They're all one millimeter in diameter. That done, I can glue the main gear bay into place. There are three identification lamps on the wing. I'll put the transparency in and secure with a tiny drop of ultra thin cement. Don't forget to paint the back with silver or aluminium too. Then the upper wing skins can go on. Followed by this insert on each side with the gun barrels. Now I'm using deployed flaps, so they go in next, but not before I've straightened them out. Both were bent quite a lot. Anyway, they straighten out fairly easily. Then they slot into the back of the wing with ease. The ailerons slip into the end of the wing as well. Then we have to join the wing to the fuselage. We slot the rear of the wing in underneath the radiator scoop first, then push down on the front of the wing to get it into place. There is a fillet piece in front of the gear bay. 
and I'll use some clamps then to hold everything in place while it dries. I found that the fit was generally very good. Now for the propeller mounting and the propeller shaft slots through this front plate and a back plate can be glued on. Now if you haven't glued the shaft itself it will still turn allowing the propeller to spin later on. The assembly goes into the nose and an intake fairing I suspect for an oil cooler smooths out the chin. There are two pegs inside the radiator outlet depending on the position of the door. The bottom one for when the cooler door is closed, the upper one for when it's open. Just cut off the tab you're not using. The radiator vent door can then go into place. Now while all that's drying I've still got some other jobs to do. First is to make the tailplanes or horizontal stabilizers, each of which comes in two halves. When they're dry an elevator fits on the back. The tailplanes can then go either side of the fin or vertical stabiliser and the rudder goes on the back of that. That all now needs to set up. So in the meantime I'll do some things like sanding the fins of the rockets as they have horrible moulding joints on them. I'll also assemble the teardrop fuel tanks. The fins can go on the tails of each rocket and then I'll start on the aircraft's wheels. These have steel centre rims with rubber black tyres. The propeller assembly itself is simple. First fit the boss to the centre of a propeller. This then goes onto the black, this then goes onto the back plate. Then the spinner goes on top. Now I've no idea why the boss is there as it can't be seen with the spinner on at all. Maybe some really early Mustangs didn't have spinners, I don't know. Anyway, I'll also fit the bomb racks now as well. They have stabiliser grips on, which is a nice touch. Now the tyres have dried, I'm going to add a very gentle wash of a sandy colour to make them look used. Onwards to the canopy and masking. I'll start with the windshield. What I do is lay a piece of frog tape or other low tack masking tape. Then I use a cocktail stick really well into the edge of the frame. After that I can chase around the inside of the edge with a really sharp knife blade. A scalpel is perfect but do take care as the one thing scalpel blades are really really good at is cutting skin. Within just a few minutes you'll have the glass masked. For the canopy itself I tend to mask the edges with a thin tape then paint the inside with a liquid mask. I'm also going to put some liquid mask on these signal lights. Now you can of course buy a pre-cut mask set with all of this done for you. Remember don't use your best brushes for the liquid mask as it will dry into the bristles and getting it in and out will ruin any point the brush may once have had. Maybe I'll try some cheap nylon brushes for this in future. Next comes the instrument combing. This goes in underneath the windshield. I'll use a tiny drop of ultra thin to secure it just at the very front end. Then the gun sight. Now here is an excess moulding that can be cut off. But on the other side you want to go along until you can feel a dent along the sprue feed and that is where to cut it off. That extra bit sits in this indentation. A tiny dab of glue at the end will secure the sight. I'll paint it black when it's set. Then the windshield as a whole can go into place in the fuselage. It's a really good fit, so just secure with a couple of tiny dabs of ultra thin. As that's drying, I'll add some detail wash and some oil stains to the wheels. The hint of colour of the oil helps break up the bluish steel everywhere. I'm also going to paint the rockets while they're still on the sprue. White body, olive drab warhead, aluminium fins, fuses and launch rails. Now I've blocked off the cockpit with tissue and tape so I can start the paint job. I'm using a two part metallic spray system made by Vallejo. First thing to apply is a coat of black gloss primer all over. 
Then the metallic coat goes on top. I've done the whole plane in aluminium, but the wing panels, I'm doing a darker Dural color. On the instructions, these would be number 11 silver and number 56 aluminium, respectively. When it's dry, I can mask off for the anti glare black nose and the squadron red flashes. Now on the propeller, I've painted it aluminium, but I'm doing black now over the blades. And when that's dry, I can use a gentle 600 grit sanding stick to just chip the paint off the leading edges to bring out the metal beneath. A kind of eroded look. Now give all the paint time to dry thoroughly then start adding the decals. This is when I know I'm getting close to the finish and the plane starts to take on its character. Does anything shriek USA more than stars and bars on bare metal? When they're done I'll add transparent paint to the ID lights. They'd be yellow, green and red. Final build now and the main gear inner doors join together like this then slot simply into place in the middle of the gear well. There's an actuator arm, one end fits into the spar and the other into the inside of the gear door. Do the same on the other side. Now the main gear leg has a tenon that sits into this slot in the wheel. Now this sets the position of the weighted main flat spot. Make sure you get them the right way round. Then there's a door grip here that fits onto the leg itself. Then the gear door sits in a hole at the top of the leg and against that grip. Once you're happy with it, repeat for the other side. And when all that's drying up, you can fit the tail wheel onto its leg. Next I'll populate the stores, firstly the fuel tanks and then the rockets. And when they're done, the main gear leg neatly sits into a hole in the bay. It is slightly loose to do check the position constantly as it sets. And while you're waiting, on the canopy there are a couple of structural pieces to fit. For these I'll use a white PVA as they are so close to the transparency I don't want to risk any hazing. Then there's a few finishing touches. This radio mask on the back for example and a pitot tube under the wing. There's also this landing light and that is a real pain to locate into its hole. The propeller goes on. Then the canopy goes on. And finally the exhaust stacks go into the nose. And with that my Mustang is finished. Well overall it's a beauty. It looks good in this scheme and you know what it went together pretty well. Now there were a few issues on my one, an undershot part or two, the bent flaps, but these were easy enough to overcome. It has been pointed out to me by my subscriber Brett, well noticed my friend, that there should be some big USAF letters on the wings opposite the stars and bars, and it's a pity they're not there because this would really add to the look. Anyway, the slight lack of sharpness that appeared on the sprue is really not noticeable once the whole kit's gone together. I think overall it's a very decent and very rewarding kit to make. So there it is, the Mustang. Now if you've enjoyed the video please do remember to say so by clicking the like button, the thumbs up button and if you haven't done so already please do subscribe to the channel. You do that by clicking the small logo down in the bottom right, won't cost you a penny, helps me enormously. In any case thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.